Hey guys, brand new podcast, and I am performing at the Greek Cinco de Mayo. Go to BurtBurtBurt.com. Plenty of port tour dates up at BurtBurtBurt.com. The Birdie Boy Relapse Tour is still out there and going strong until mid-April. And then big announcements, big announcements, big announcements. But not as important as the announcement of my buddy, today's guest, Akash Singh, has a special on YouTube you could, should go check out right now. It's called Bring Back a Poo. Uh, Akash is, I don't really need to tell you who he is. Uh, he's on one of the biggest po podcasts in the world. Uh, Flagrant 2 with Andrew Schultz. They are fucking absolutely hilarious. They are all over my feed. They kill it. They release. I feel like they do one a day. Don't, don't you? Yeah, it feels like it. They feel like they fucking are. I'm seeing them everywhere. But he did a great special, and he did it. And I'm telling you, man, I'm so fucking impressed by all these dudes throwing them up on YouTube. And he is fucking irreverent. He is fucking hilarious. And I'll tell you right now, he brings that out of you because he brought it out of me. I do not know what shit we talked on this podcast, but I will be doing uh, a podcast with him and Andrew. I think next week when I'm in New York, we got a lot of podcasts planned next week. He is absolutely fucking awesome. So without further ado, I want to bring up uh, my buddy, podcaster, stand-up comedian. Oh, he's got tour dates. He's got tour dates. Toledo, Funny Bone, uh, April 1st and 2nd. Uh, Tampa, Florida at the Improv, 8th and 9th of April. Toronto at the Royal Theater, uh, 22nd and 23rd. Bridgeport, Connecticut. Tacoma, Holland, Michigan. Muskegon, Michigan. Grand Rapids, Michigan. Austin, Chicago, Rosemont, Fort Worth. Find them at akashsing.com. Ladies and gentlemen, my buddy, stand-up comedian, podcaster, Akash Singh. Got up at five this morning Ooh. to get my girl's coffee. Uh, I like, it's the only thing. I started doing this. Uh, so it sounds super silly. I started doing this happiness journal. And, I love uh, that. And what I started doing is highlighting things that, that I know make me happy. And then, That's a great idea. I'm a therapy guy. I'm all about all this stuff. Me too. I me mean, too. Affirmations I write in my phone before big shows. Yeah, it sounds so vulnerable to say, but like it changed a lot for me. It's, you know, it's, I got to be honest with you. I'm really into Rob. Um, Rob uh, Rob Deerdeck. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, Rob yeah. Deerdeck does a lot of that shit. Yeah. And so I started. I I was kind of inspired by him. He was talking to Dalia and uh, Callan, interestingly enough, <laughs> and was saying that he uh, and Shaw. But he was saying he could count the days that he the, his bad days last year, and both of them had pretty rough years. Right. Yeah. Which was which is why the clip went viral. Yeah. But I, all I heard was that he could count his bad days, and I went. Yeah, oh. that's interesting. So I started highlighting things that made me happy. And then acknowledge him. And one of the things that makes me happy is taking care of, is gratitude. Is having people being grateful for me. Yes. It feels good to have like, uh, to have my daughter be like, hey, uh, thanks dad for the coffee. Like yeah. Isla came back, she saw me naked, but she came back to, <laughs> to the sauna this morning. I was, there, I was in there naked. She goes, she had her coffee. She goes, oh, not how I wanted to start my day. <laughs> Sweet. Were you always into therapy? This sounds horrific to say, no. but I would I would assume therapy in Indian culture isn't a go-to. You're go crazy if you go to therapy. That, it's, Basically, like, there's nothing wrong with you. Why would you go to therapy? That's yeah. what my mom was big on. She thinks I'm perfect also, which is a, a bit of a problem. But uh, I, when I met my wife, this first relationship I've ever been in, I was like a pretty, very straight kid, like didn't drink, didn't smoke, didn't do any of that. Really? Met her, my first girlfriend, first girl I ever had sex with, 31. And then obviously you're very immature in relationships. I would lose my temper, blow up, whatever. And I was like, man, I got so much shit I know I need to work on. And I knew I needed to go to therapy, but this was like, I have to, I can't let this cost me this relationship. You it's know what I mean? I got in therapy. Yeah. She put me in therapy. Yeah. And then when I went, she had inspired my wife to go and there's no way we make it without that. Yeah. Without like, and now we realize we had a big fight last week and then realize like my, my issues make me interpret certain things a certain way and then i blow up and then i say things that she misinterprets because of her issues and then that's all it is it's just a myth like when they say communication is everything for me that's what it's been for her and me is yeah. like it's just our shit makes us misunderstand each other uh yeah for, for for me and my wife ours was um my wife wasn't good she'd never had a safe place to apologize in mm. Like her mom was a shit show, yeah. allegedly. I don't know how the right way to handle that. But, <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, and her dad is a very Southern, traditional, uh, 
doesn't like pasta sauce because it's too spicy kind of redneck right, right, you know right. like i ain't dying about that ketchup i don't right. just want butter i'll take butter and cheese <laughs> and so uh but leanne never had a safe place to apologize that's why i did kind of teach her how to apologize yeah she, and to this day i mean getting an apology out of that bitch is like getting, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's easier to fuck her in the ass than to get her to apologize and i've never fucked her in the ass <laughs> You said something one time. I, I've, I've, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I've li Likewise, I listen to man. you guys all the time. Um, and you, I, I don't know if you said it or if I heard it or if I m misheard what I wanted to hear. Right. But that you, that you only wanted to date an Indian. Yeah, chick. yeah. I love that. I, and I, I don't know why I love that. First of all, I'll start here. Dude, I slept on Indian chicks for the longest time. Yeah, that's a real, they're a thing. They're, they're a real thing. Oh, fucking Yeah, thing. I'm very lucky in that sense. My yeah. first time I moved to New York, the first Indian chick I met, I was like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Like, and, 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 and then as it progressed, I'd just be like, I, like the order I got, but, but I, I was in a generation where, and, and I, I'm, I'm sure that not everyone that's 49 would say this, but like, where i grew up it's like i only dated white yeah, chicks yeah. a couple cubans maybe yeah but uh but only did white chicks you went down to ebor got a couple of them cuban cuban girls <laughs> south tampa west, <laughs> west tampa <laughs> the night of favelo <laughs> uh, by the way zenny's my buddy's wife i did not have sex with zenny <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah and so but you said that and i thought that was really cool i i, I thought it was cool in a world where everyone is so woke they're yeah they're not even, i don't know if it was a there's no there's no threat for you but if i said i only date white chicks right people right. go there's racist but when i heard you say that i thought that's so fucking badass thank you i wouldn't mind if you said about white girls you're into what you're into yep. now for me i was the same way i grew up in a suburb with a bunch of white kids and i was like kind of self-loathing and so i i didn't ignore indian girls my biggest crushes were still on indian girls and i still hoped i could marry one one day whatever but then when i started to be more proud of who i was I looked at my women. I was like, these are the most beautiful women. And I also thought like, this is a weird woke thing I noticed. I'm not normally the guy, but like I never saw a happy Indian couple in American film or TV. It was always the same hacky thing where like, yeah, I'm supposed to get an arranged marriage by fall in love with someone who's not Indian. And then yeah. I choose them in the end. Or, you know, like there's an Indian guy like Dodge and Van Wilder. Um, yeah, I've never saw Van Wilder. Really? I never, no, no, yeah, I never saw it. Was that that guy Cal? Yeah, 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 yeah. You really didn't see it. Never seen so it. when I first heard about you, Robbie Slovic, Tampa guy, loves you. Yeah. Well before any of the Netflix stuff, he was like, "He's in town. I'm going to go see him, and he's the best. You got to see Bert." And then yeah. he told me Van Wilder was based on you. Yeah, and that's funny. You haven't seen it. Did well, you get a check I, I, at least? I had no, no. I had nothing to do with the movie. It's really? Just, yeah. From I just met Oliver Stone this uh, last week, uh, and so well, well, that I, Oliver Stone option the rest of my life when I was in college. I was written, there was an article written about right. me calling me the number one party animal in the country in Rolling yeah. Stone. Yes. Oliver Stone option the rest of my life. This is all allegedly, I, don't, I mean, I, this is all people, stuff people told me. The uh, article got option. They read a bunch of scripts about, it had to be about a journalist and a party animal was right. the, had to be the premise. Yeah. Because I wrote a script and they just turned it away immediately. It's unreal. And, and then, uh, and then I, the, I got, option, I got to deal with Will Smith. And so the option kind of fell apart. Ah. And one of the writers took the script, changed my name, kept a bunch of my friends' names, sold it to National Lampoon. Wow. Yeah. And so then I, from what I heard, I heard this from a bunch of people, but including the people at National Lampoon. But uh, they had read the article on set and they're like, this is the thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never, I we were going to sue, but I just said no. Yeah, it's better that way. Barry Katz said yeah. to me, we were on a conference call the day it, that movie came out and he said, uh, there's two people in this business people that work and people that sue pick which one you want to be yeah and and i hopefully one day i get to meet ron reynolds yeah i'd like to i think he's, he's fucking awesome. he seems great he seems fucking awesome handsome funny guy's got everything yeah he's he's the best uh yeah yeah honestly and he's funny as shit yeah and he's got a gin company and he's got like the way he runs his business i always I, wait what were we talking about right before that oh though? anyway yeah so i said like i when i I just thought it oh, was yeah. weird. Representation. That, yeah, and and it's always kind of celebrated in um, Indian Americans to not date and marry an Indian. So I thought about like, I want that to be a priority. Now, I really did fall in love with my wife. And I think like she was for me and I was for her. But I always was like, I want to marry an Indian girl. That's it. That's There's no other option for it's me. It's interesting. I'm in a weird place with uh, 
with representation and and understanding and all that stuff because you know for my whole life i was represented in everything yeah and i never looked at anything represented poorly as anything other than but that's how it is yeah yeah. and but when you say that indian marriages that that in the movie that would would always be like uh oh fuck yeah man what the fuck and then now i look at it and i go i bet that would have been I wonder what the percentage of who stayed together versus who didn't stay together. In my experience, it's the same. I mean, they don't get divorced because you didn't get divorced, but like half of them seem really happy and half of them did not at all. And that's basically what you see in America is a 50% divorce rate. So if they stayed together, it'd be the same probably. So I think it's just about the people. And that's, again, I was was even asking your wife, like, what's your advice? And Uh, I heard you guys talk. Yeah, yeah. And to me, the only real red flag outside of like abuse and all that awful shit is like, you're not willing to work on you and us. If we're both there in that place, we're going to be all right. And that's when I saw that in my wife, you know, and, and I, we did the real work. It's like, yo, this is it. This is the girl. It's funny. I, I, I'm, I, I shit on my wife a lot on stage. I yeah, should me, me too. Yeah, me like, too. yeah. It's like it's like yeah, I don't understand guys who celebrate their fucking wives on I'm stage. Like, you're, yeah. a, you're a creep, dude. Yeah, I know a guy who did. I'll tell you who. I'll just, just edit his name out. Just said everything i needed to know yeah of course and i remember going like i remember watching him celebrate her and then knowing what he did behind yeah closed doors and then i was like all right i was like well i'm in love but i'm not gonna play it like that yeah I, yeah yeah i sniffed that out yes and so i i've always been very honest about my relationship with my wife and my kids and the frustrations i think the frustrations are what makes it fun when it's you... three-dimensional i'll also say i love her but she's yeah. a pain in my ass like this is she probably feels the same way about me. If you don't paint three dimensions of your wife, you're not doing any justice to anything. To her, to comedy, to yourself, nothing. Yeah. It's a fucking waste of time. Wait, where did you grow up? Baltimore? I grew up in Texas, actually, in Dallas. Oh, that's right. I knew that. So I'm a Southern boy. That. It's all good. I'm a Southern boy, though. So I relate to a lot of the country shit. You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. get it. I relate to it. It's not as Southern as uh, Florida, necessarily. It's like more Southwest. But there's a, I had some country-ass friends growing up. I bet. Yeah. I bet. What was it like? Was it... When you look back now, now as a comic, because I think as a comic, I think there's a self awareness of looking back at your childhood, or your youth, and saying, saying like, oh yeah, that that was kind of fucked up. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, oh yeah, was do you look back and go, yeah, we we busted balls, but sometimes I got it too much because I was the one Indian guy. I didn't feel that. I mean, yeah. the the only thing I cringe at even now is like, like the Indian jokes that aren't funny. Or the like hacky accent. Like if it's a good accent, yeah. I'm in. If you have a good Indian accent, I don't care what you look like. I just don't like when it's the same thing. And then I get a little bit like sensitive or cringy or whatever. But if it's funny, and part of the reason Andrew and I, Andrew Schultz and I connected so quickly is he wasn't afraid to make the race joke, which I yeah. found a lot in New York was a lot of like, I don't want to touch it at all. And it's like, well, now you're not being real with me. And Andrew yeah. would say stuff in like funny ways and unique race jokes that I hadn't heard. So I was like, oh, this guy can't be racist. He's nuanced enough to not be racist. Said, and he's honest enough to make the joke with me. I actually said that to him one time. I said, it's, what's interesting about your crowd work is when you ask a question, you're not asking it uninformed. Yeah. You're asking it knowing nuance of things. And I always ask uninformed. Right. My, all my, I, my, my experience in life has always been uninformed. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah. But uh, that's like why the, when, you know, obviously... Congrats on the special, Thank but you so much. the bring back a poo yeah. versus the problem with a poo. Right, right. I watched Harry Condoluni's movie and I was like trying desperately <laughs> to get, to go to like I want to hear his side. Yeah, I want to hear his side, and yeah. I go and I'm like, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, Hank Azarian probably shouldn't be doing the voice. Yeah, I get that, and I'm like, but his, I, in my in a weird place, it's like. I don't know where I stand. I go, I, I loved Apu and it seemed like Apu was the one. He was the most three-dimensional character on that show outside of the Simpsons. Yeah. And he evolved more than everyone, including the Simpsons. He, we lost a business or got a business back, got married, had kids, came a father and struggled with father. You saw him. Mo was Mo. He yeah. was a miserable fuck every time. Barney was a loser every episode. <laughs> He was a, in one episode, he became an astronaut and sobered up and then he got drunk 10 minutes later. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Apu evolved. So I understood some of the jokes about uh, in The Simpsons at Apu's bank were like hacky. Yeah. But there was also the 80s, dude. They didn't have fucking, it, it was a whole different society. So you can ask the jokes to evolve. I wouldn't even, I wish they had got a guy at the beginning that was, that was Indian. But once Hank made it, this guy, you can't replace Hank Azaria. Was- I have no, no problem with Hank Azaria. And I don't think he did it maliciously. 
I also try to judge a person's, Andrew says this a lot of time, judge me by my intentions. Yeah. I don't think his intentions or the Simpsons intentions were ever malicious. And if it hurt your feelings, that's valid. If people used it and hurt your feelings, that's valid. But there's a difference between getting your feelings hurt and being oppressed. That's my whole thing. There is. And there is. Yeah. And there is like, like I, I'm, I'm a bad person because I, when it comes to movies like that, like I'm just watching You're the one on Cosby. Person. I don't know. I'm watching the one on Cosby. Have you seen this? No, but I want to. It's fucking <laughs> awesome. By the way, Harry's best friend. Come out. Oh, yeah, directed yeah, yeah. It. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the, they're both like, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting um, because I, I think Kamal's getting a bunch of shit from um, uh, from someone. I'm yeah. assuming it's uh, it's black culture. Right. For not demonizing him for demonizing fucking Cosby, I, I guess. I don't for know. Demonizing for not demonizing for demonizing. Oh, OK, I, I guess. Who fucking knows? There's still dudes. There's still comics that use the hashtag free Bill Cosby. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. G's up. I love that shit, dude. I love that shit so much. That loyalty, I fucking love. I don't have to agree with you, but that loyalty, I love. I was so the one of the. I mean, I I hate to make light of it, but like, nah, let's make light. There was. Are a, we comics? You know what I mean. We're supposed to be dark. There was all the a. Time? There was a. There was a. There was a fight between two comics, and and I won't say the chick's name because she's a good friend of mine but the guy and she just said i worked for this guy he made me uncomfortable uh what's his name phase on love yeah <laughs> i love this guy dude. I love, he's the fucking greatest I dude i look I, and and i'm only saying this because he goes i guess someone in her crew in his crew made her uncomfortable made some advances or whatever and she <laughs> called him out already so happy. she called him out and and look i i don't stand for the fucking making chicks uncomfortable in a workplace when it's Correct. comedy. I do not believe in that. Correct. But Faison Love's response was, nah, bitch, you got the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. Hashtag free Bill Cosby. <laughs> like, what? I love a, this guy, dude. Zero fucks dude. given. Hashtag free oh Bill Cosby. Dude. And he was, and I, but like, I, and by, I wish I could know that Faison Love was doing it for the reason to, that he made me laugh, but part of me thinks he just really goes. Uh, no, 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 no. He's that guy, dude. <laughs> he's that guy. And oh. I tell you, I've known about Phase on Love. I remember when I was in like fourth grade, there was a oh. show called The Parenthood, and I thought he was so funny in it. And then I saw him play Big Worm and Friday in like seventh grade, and I was like, yo, he can play. A then he was in Money Talks, really funny flyby. Yep. And I was like, yo, this guy's he was so in funny. Made with Vince Vaughn. He was and, in and Made. He's dude. Six forty five. He was in Couples Retreat. Yeah. He's yeah. dude. He was dialed into that crew of like Jean Favreau, Vince Vaughn, Vince Vaughn, and he was so. I always used to be like, "Yo, he's so underrated as a comedic actor. Why doesn't he get more work?" And now I'm like, oh, "I get it. Hashtag. Now that's why he don't get the work." But I love the fucking "I don't care" attitude. I think Face on Face on Love's a fucking fascinating guy because he really does not give a fuck. He's, I think he's on the no fly list right now. <laughs> I'm not even joking. He threw a dude. He <laughs> threw a dude at a Columbus airport. By the way, I know I'm gonna piss off Face on Love because you. Whenever anyone talks about you, you, and you hear, hear it, about it. You hear it the wrong way. Yes. And there's no way to look. This is a video of Face on Love. I Throw love this. this shit, yo. Look at he throws the dude. Watch this. Now I'm about done with you. <laughs> That's such a fucking <laughs> look at Jesus, that. dude. Face on Love. Oh my oh. god. Yo, hey, God bless this man. And it sounds like I'm laughing at him. I'm not. I. Everybody wishes they had the heart to be like, I don't give a fuck what you think. I am going to be me through and through, good and bad. I care what do you care what people think? I do. I'm, I'm sure. Because you course, guys, yeah. you guys, I hear your takes sometimes, and I'm like, I go the, the other day. I was like, he, you're still at that place in your life where you don't think you'll ever run into Kanye or or Pete. Yeah, no, like I, you I, just are going like. If I bump into him, I bump into him. I've I've gotten to the place where I've talked shit, and then yeah, I'm gonna hit that. And then that. the dude bumped into me. I'm gonna I, hit that. Yeah, <laughs> I know, and I know, and I'm, what I'm trying to do now is I'm gonna say things that I would be comfortable saying to your face. I shit on Tristan Thompson now. If he wants who's to, that? Who's he's that? the basketball player who cheats on Khloe Kardashian all the time. I don't know. Now, yeah. if he wants to murder me, he could do it in ten seconds. But I think I'd be comfortable saying, "Hey, man." You're a deadbeat in the sense that your girl is pregnant and then you're cheating on her and getting another girl pregnant. That's yeah. I think I could comfortably say that's a piece of shit move. Yeah. So if you want to be mad about that, okay. But I'm I'm not out here saying 
anything that I wouldn't say to you, I no, think. And, and, and by the way, nothing that you say, like with the whole Pete Kanye thing that I was following you guys about, nothing you say doesn't have me laughing. And part of me thinks, part of me thinks, Kanye doesn't give a fuck. Oh, dude, he's a genius. I, he's a part of me thinks he does not give a fuck. Yeah. And that, and that, and you could tell just by the tweet that Pete was nervous. Yeah. And and that Kim was nervous. Because you're dealing with crazy. You're dealing with actual crazy. And you know that there was a part of Kanye that had to be like, I bet he at one point was like, oh, wait, they're they're believing this? I, I was married to her. She knows my personality. Oh, you're saying it's all an act. Like, I. I, oh. I don't. I think it's. I think it's. It's quite possible. I think. He, well, he's got genius. Yeah, he's. That's what Andrew says. He's a brilliant marketer. So anytime yeah. he's got some shit coming out, all of a sudden he starts saying these wild things and crazy things. And yeah, that made me watch. That made me that watched, much more likely to watch Genius, and it's incredible. Genius. Yeah, I watched Genius. It's I watched incredible. Genius. Incredible. It came up, and I went, "Ooh, Kanye." I've been yeah. thinking about him a lot. I watched uh, Takashi Six Nine get in a fight in an airport. Yeah. I was at the fucking airport. Wow. I was at the airport when he got in a fight with the gang and at LAX. And I googled Takashi Six Nine, yeah, and then listened to his music and was like, actually, that's not that bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind Takashi Six Nine's music. I think it's pretty good. I think he's a great marketer, more than great musician. But, way better than, yeah, way yeah, better. Respect for anybody who can get the. I mean, you got to do it how you got to do it. And I, there's a line I can't cross in my mind. But if you don't have that line, dude, you can just keep going. See, I t I talk shit to people, hoping they know I'm a comedian. Yeah, like hoping they get it. Like, and sometimes they don't. Like I, I talk shit to, uh, I talk shit, joking to Aaron Rodgers, and it, I didn't turn out well at first. Yeah, he's sensitive. No, he's just he. He was like, "Are you, are you trolling me, bro?" And like, and I was like, "Oh fuck!" I was like, "I was just joking." Like, yeah. and then I was like, and then I had to text Tom. I'm like, "What the fuck do I do?" And he was like, "He's got a sense of humor. He's got to be honest and say, you know, I was just fucking around and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like I just, ch I challenged Stylebender to a fight <laughs> and uh, on two bears. No, Stylebender's great. He gets I, it. I, that guy gets it. I don't know if he gets it. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, he is a cage fighter. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I, I understand that he, he might be fun on a podcast every now and then, but I don't know if he gets it. Like <laughs> that's my fear. Wait, what was his response? Because I, I promise you he's, he, I don't know many people that are like as fucking good at, as him at everything. But, Cage fighters are different in a, in like, like Joe's got that shit. Like Joe is a straight up comedian. Yeah. But there are times when you talk shit to Joe where it does a thing to him. Yeah. It's the yeah. reason he's got into touching people and throwing them around. Yeah. It's the <laughs> reason that he, the reason that he got into mixed martial arts at a certain age is, is tied to the thing I said. Yeah. Right. Like I remember, I remember we were doing, uh, challenge sober we we're doing sober october and, and i and he was running up a mountain and he was being fun joe hey i'm going two miles up the mountain and then that day i ran four miles I, and i did a video i was like joe i'm watching you let me tell you something buddy you run two miles i'll run four good luck buddy oh and but yeah, i made a yeah, joke yeah. out of it yeah because he was like i was like i made a joke that i because he was with marshall his dog and he was like i'm running two miles i'm with my best friend Hey, come here, Marshall. Come here. And then Marshall came up and he's like, yeah, sober October, feeling great. And then I was like, Joe, you run two miles. I run four. I'm here with my fucking dog and I don't give a shit. You put out, you run 10, I run 20. Come here. Where the fuck did my dog go? That was a joke, yeah, right? Right, right, right. Joe missed the joke. <laughs> Joe ran 20 miles. <laughs> and, he, and, and the next day, the next day, the communication stopped and the fucking challenge is, okay, you want, you want to do this? That's and an alpha motherfucker, dude. And Stylebender is an alpha motherfucker. Yeah. And and I, I man, I, I'm nervous because he hasn't replied. And oh. Tom's, I'm, I'm like, I'm like this. I don't even. And then I wrote a fucking freestyle about him. <laughs> <laughs> He'll probably try to get you comedically. I think he's he again. It's almost like um, some kid that doesn't do some fighter being like, I'll take your 20 minutes of comedy any fucking day. I'll do that shit. You'll be like, OK, that's cute. What do you think? I might not respond to this, but like. Well, you know that's not real. Some fucking UFC fighter being like, I guarantee you, I got a strong... I could do a story better than the machine. Uh, I promise you I can. You'd be like, that's not real. Yeah. Just no, you know, that's cute that you're doing that. But I don't know. Uh, T.I.'s doing stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Have he, you seen that? Yeah. Good for him. Again, I think he'll figure it out. I really do. I think he's a smart First guy. First of all, he's, he is super engaging. Like, yes. he, you want to watch him talk. Dude, a rapper's natural charisma is crazy. Natural performer is crazy. Now, will he dig deep and get to the comedic, like, writing shit? I don't know. But I give him a chance before I give half these open micers a chance. 
Yeah, I remember I, Will Smith tried to get into stand up. He did. He did. That was like a fear thing. My Rel Battle, one of my, my good friends, helped him like write his thing or whatever. But like, yeah, it was just give him. He just wanted to do it to conquer fear. That's his whole thing. Is fear destroys humanity. So I want to take all my fears and conquer them, and yeah. make a great web series out of it and make a lot of money. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, uh, he'd be yeah. doing all of it. I don't know. I have. I have. I have. Uh, I have issues with the Jada. The, me too. <laughs> bothers me so much that's one that if i ran into her i'd be scared about she'd fuck me up yeah she would fuck me up she too would fuck me up but she's yeah. like she's like trying to fight a cat you ever try to fight you ever try to catch a cat and <laughs> no. it doesn't want to be caught no, that's, and it fucks you, you, you up it dude. fucks you up bad you can't a kitten man a kitten my daughter's got a kitten and i she was like dad can you just get it make sure that it's not under the bed but when we leave and i go yeah yeah sure so it's under the bed and i go come on that thing fucked me up and i was like i am 250 pounds heavier than this fucking thing how is that winning that's yeah. fucking jada i would never yeah. fuck with her but you also know if you needed to kill that kitten you could kill that kitten you know what i mean that's it like, i don't know if i could kill jada <laughs> i don't know i just don't like what what i don't like the path the I like i just don't the red table talk thing where it's like here's how i feel about any of that therapy type of stuff if you're not gonna bring all of your shit to that table that's not a real conversation you're having so there's certain things I don't want to be public about, but I'm not going to have a therapy show with somebody unless I'm willing to bring those out on the table and be like, here's my deep issue shit. So if you have a year or two years of that show and nobody knows you had an affair, yeah. and then even after we find out you still call it an entanglement, it's like, all right, well, you got to work on yourself still. Yeah. Don't help everybody else. Do a show where you just work on you. I would love to see that show. Bring therapists on and let's work on you. And then from there, we'll work on everybody else. This podcast is brought to you by Bird Dogs. I fucking love my Bird Dogs. I am so lucky that Bird Dogs sponsors my podcast because I have Bird Dogs in my man cave. So when I wake up in the morning, I go out, I throw on a pair of Bird Dogs. I can work out in my Bird Dogs because they, they have the best liners possible. You run in them. I, I'm, I'm being dead serious. They're great running shorts. They're great swimming shorts. They're great hanging around the pool shorts, throwing a barbecue. They look classy. They look high end. And more importantly, they have joggers. Bird Dog has fucking joggers. These joggers, you throw them on, put them, take them to the country club, take them to the, the out to dinner. You can play golf in them. They are so, and they have the liners also. Their joggers have liners. I wore them on the plane the other day with a pair of uh, Yeezys. Holy crap. I'm being serious when I say this. Bird Dogs are your summer short. This summer, get yourself a couple pairs of Bird Dogs. I wear a double XL now. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, but whatever. I wear a double XL now. I used to wear an XL. I'm 250. <laughs> what am I doing? But anyway, get yourself a pair of bird dogs, and that is your summer short. Go to birddogs.com and enter the promo code BIRD, and they're going to throw in a free bird dogs whistle football. That's birddogs.com, enter the promo code BIRD, and boom, a free bird dogs whistle football with your pair of bird dogs. Trust me, you will not take these things off. I promise. As soon as I wake up, I'm on the go. Next thing you know, it's lunchtime and I haven't eaten anything. No wonder I'm angry. Anyway, what are my options? Running through a drive through and grabbing something I don't know if it's good or not? Not me. That's not where my head is right now. That's why I have Huel. Huel is human fuel. Provides all the carbs, proteins, fats, and fibers, 27 essential vitamins and minerals you need, and everything is plant-based. They have a wide range of convenient on-the-go options for someone who wants to eat healthy, but doesn't have a ton of time like me. They also have the classic flavors in the Huel powder, which is vanilla, chocolate, salted caramel. Just mix it with water and the free shaker they're going to get with your, with your first order and you're good to go. They also have a pre-mixed ready-to-go drink that'll save you more time. There's even one with more protein, less carbs, and naturally gluten-free option. That's the Huel Black Edition. That's the ultimate human fuel. And they also have this hot and savory one. Their, their meals are fantastic. Mac and cheese. A chili and Thai green curry and a few other options you can try. You can make it in less than five minutes. I love Huel. It tastes fantastic. And for me, it's nice to know that I don't have to think about it. I just know that I'm eating healthy. Huel has proved that fast food can be good food. I love it. And you're going to love it too. And right now, you can get free shipping on your first order plus a shaker and a free t-shirt. Go to Huel.com slash Burt. That's H-U-E-L dot com slash Burt. Get free shipping on your first order plus a shaker and a t-shirt. Fuel.com slash Bert. 
I'm all about apologies. I love a good apology. I'm apology. I'm a, if anything, I'm accountable. Trust me when I say I spend hours in my bed in the morning and, and, and throughout my life thinking of the shit I've done wrong. That's why your marriage works. Uh, you hold yourself accountable and you apologize. These two things as a husband, I've realized. Yeah. Because you got to, I almost always got to apologize first. My wife will apologize. But rarely is it first. Oh, Leah never goes first. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Never. A, I've even the relationship books I've read have been like, you gotta do that first. And you're still gonna take some darts. You're still gonna just give me a couple moments of just fuck, fuck, fuck. And you're gonna have to just be like, look, I'm gonna we're gonna get to the place. Don't oh. worry about that yet. I didn't like him apologizing to Aunt Viv. Oh, you didn't. Mm -mm. I did. I did like that, even though I thought it was not necessarily real. I love if it was a real <laughs> apology, I love that. <laughs> It was real. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you like it? Because, because you're in, okay, listen, you're in Hollywood. You know how this works. I'm not in Hollywood. So, no, but like genuinely, they couldn't give less of a fuck about me. You, but you understand, you, uh, you understand the business of this yeah. is that sometimes a show starts out, out as one thing mm -hmm. and the energy shifts and a star shows up mm -hmm. and everyone pivots and says this needs to be more of the focus okay and zendaya I, and like the way i think she now i think she's a mega star i think she's incredible yeah. that girl's gonna take over the world what, what did she start as she i think she's like a disney girl and then yeah. i would see her name and it always seemed like every move she made was a good move and then she was in spider-man and then i've been seeing her in the show euphoria i don't know if you're watching that i saw her in spider-man and let me tell you something and i know who zendaya is i just didn't know how she started yeah but trust me when i say you're drawn to Zendaya. You're drawn to her, and, and she's a fucking mega talent. And, and anyone who sits there and ignores that, and any other actor that's in a movie with someone that that notices that that's happening, it's it's ego. It's real ego. And yeah. and, and I've I've been on shows hosted where you're with four people, and you watch the uh, the 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 person draws focus. They mm -hmm. just draw focus. And Aunt Viv was a very talented actor, but she was becoming a problem on set because she wanted more lines. As opposed to saying, hey, my pay hasn't changed, but my role in the show has. Uh, she should have just walked away from it and said, this isn't what I want. I need to move forward. Here's where I, I believe her. This is one of the race things I believe. I think if you're a dark-skinned black girl and they just say you're difficult, no, everybody's going to be like, oh, she must be difficult. Wait, I is really, that what she said? That's So what she said is they offered her a pay decrease. And okay, she said she was oh, in an abusive that. relationship, which like did fuck her up. And then she was, she did isolate herself from everybody because she didn't know how to talk about it to anyone. Uh -huh. And that obviously you got to make space for. But then if you offer me a pay decrease, I'm going to have a problem with it. And I would hope, and Will is 20 at the time. So he's what does a he child. really know? He's, he's a, a child. baby. So he's not necessarily going to know how to act in that situation. Will at 40 would be like, yo, pay that woman at least the same, if yeah. not more. But I think at the time he didn't have her back and she was like, yo, what the fuck? You could get me money. And she probably in a bad place. But yeah. He, when was, a, he was a kid. First of all, I'm a ride or die for Will Smith. Okay, I love this. For he should be president. Over the rock, Will Smith. I, uh, let me tell you something. I'm ready to champion whatever the fuck he wants to do. I fucking got his back and I will assemble an army. <laughs> I fuck, that guy is the most charismatic human being. He's yeah. been the, one of the kindest dudes in the entire world. Right. And, and, I'm, and I knew him, not at 20, but I knew him just a little older than that. And... He like whatever she painted him out to be. I saw the I, it's Uncle Phil. Yeah, I we were, I was with Will and we ran into Uncle Phil one time. Yeah, and Will jumped out of his car and Uncle Phil jumped out of his car and they gave a huge hug. Yeah, huge hug. And I went, oh, that's who Will is. Yeah. And so any representation of him other than that on that show, I, I just kind of go right, right, right. I kind of go, hey, actresses are fucking crazy. I've met a lot of. That's them. true. I met a lot fair. of them. They're all fucking crazy. Actors are also crazy. And Will oh, yeah, is, actors and actresses. Yeah. Will's not a, an actor to me. Will is Will. He's no, his he's, own entity. He's, he's Will Smith. He's a fucking, he's a he's a hyphenate. Yeah. Multi-hyphenate. Truly. What, Every, wait, what do you want to do? Because you say you're not in Hollywood, but I kind of see you in Hollywood. I would love to do a good show. Like uh, Bobby Lee is good friends with uh, Eric Stone Street from Modern Family. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I watched that show and I'm like, that's a show I would love to be on. I would love to be on a good show in my career it, but that doesn't i don't want that to be the centerpiece of my career the centerpiece for me was always stand up at a certain point i realized that's what i want to do all these little things that were like yeah this is it and i always wanted to use acting as a way to get more people to watch my stand up but i do enjoy acting i think for a comedian i'm a good actor for yeah. a comedian but 
I don't want to do terrible shit, which is what we usually have to do. And now with the podcast, I don't. And I have so much fun on the podcast doing it with Andrew. And it's hard work, but it's like I get to say the things I want to say. I get to make a direct connection with fans. So I'm not. So for a, a show to take me away from that, I can't imagine that happening. You would have to work around my podcast schedule. You have to work around my stand-up schedule. And I would want it to be a good show. If it's a career opportunity, I might do a little less than it's gonna good. Be, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be real tough. And because yeah. they're like, we, they don't get it. They're like, well, why, we're not going to work around. Somebody said to me, like, I don't know if you know how much a sitcom pays. And I was like, I do. And it's not that much. It's not. And that's the frustrating thing. And this is when you when you look at the attack on Joe, the the, the plotted attacks. And, and the, yeah. I know you guys talked about the same thing happened with Chappelle. Yeah. It's, it's a plotted attack. The media right. takes an angle and then they they line up. They line up their soldiers and they go, now we're moving forward. This is how we drum up ratings. And what the thing that, one of the reasons that drives them fucking nuts is that on a podcast, we make more money than, I, mean, I don't know what Don Lemon makes, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm certain Tim Dillon makes more. We can form a direct connection with our fans that they can't, though, because we cut out all the middlemen between us and pay, but also between us and the fans. So yeah. you're getting a much more authentic dude. I, if Don Lemon goes on a podcast, he can his fans are only going to want him to say all that super left wing shit. Yeah. So he can't anytime he's honest and authentic, he betrays some of his fan base. No, but that's what see. That's what I, I like that. Well, that's what I like hearing opposing views. I would love to hear Don Lemon on a podcast, have his own podcast. And fucking cut loose. Like he does when he does the fucking, when they do the, whatchamacallit, and Don Lemon gets fucking wasted. Yeah. The New Year's, like, New Year's is fun. New Year's is New Year's, the best yeah. on CNN. How much, do you realize, I don't think Don Lemon understands, he can broaden, we all agree with what he's saying, technically. Yeah. Anyone in fucking Hollywood, not, all of us are fucking fairly liberal individuals. We yeah. all agree on the same core values principles. Yeah, yeah. I think if I had to say, I'm probably a little left leaning, but the left annoys me so much more. God, yeah. Oh, I'm fucking oh. God. Uh, it's it. I've had come to terms with at times saying to myself, "What is it about my party that I'm unhappy with?" Yeah. Like, what is it? And it, I think sometimes it's just extremism. Yeah, there's I no, bet there's dudes yeah. on the right that are fucking pretty sensible people, and they're like, "Yeah, I didn't storm the fucking Capitol." Both extremes. I don't want anything to do with. I don't want. I, I like the. I like the. The moderate. I like the 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 inside flap of the wing. Yeah, like yeah, not, yeah. The, not the part that's out on yeah. the, the feathers on the end. Right. I like the in where the muscle is. Yes. And that's where the most of us sit. Yes. But Don Lemon could talk very sensibly to so many more people, mm -hmm. and and express his views. And I think I think he'd aggregate more people to the sensible group and he can get fucking wasted once a month and have a fucking blast yeah, and bring 100%. on it. What's Anderson, Anderson Cooper make? He's got to make fucking buku bucks. This is uh, now where there's 200 million. Uh, he's a Vanderbilt. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's let, a Vanderbilt. Let me, What's his salary? Uh, that's blood money. Just so we know. <laughs> just so we're clear. That's the fucking. It doesn't say his salary. It just says yeah. his net worth. Anderson Cooper is a fucking gangster. Yeah. Chris See, that's foremost. a motherfucker that should start a podcast because he doesn't need anybody's money. Yeah, that's true. He owns but what he's got to own like high rises in dude i don't i think that net worth is like bullshit it's a way higher i think oh. old money like that is like they don't even make it low make it look low yeah. we own everybody dude I, I, anderson cooper I, I just got really into uh you know, your generation of comic is mm -hmm. into like uh epstein and Conspiracy rothschilds shit, yeah. and i'm and, not as much it's <clears throat> easier for me to not care about it i don't care about any of it yeah and so, but the other day I was like, well, it's, there's a fine line between not caring about any of it and then actually going like, uh, like, hey, Matt, I don't even know what a Rothschild is. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, and then I saw this clip. <clears throat> it was fucking hilarious. There's, uh, I guess there's a Yeshiva University mm -hmm. is in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. They have a basketball team. Mm -hmm. And there's a guy, kid from the basketball team interviewing people in Brooklyn about Jews playing basketball. Right. And this one black dude. <laughs> was like yo man i don't want to sound like i don't want to sound like racist or anything but he's talking to a jewish dude yeah. and he's like all i know about you guys is the rothschilds <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i love that and, and i was like all right i gotta look up the rothschilds because the and so i looked at i looked up them but i i and land on the <laughs> vanderbilt no i gotta know okay, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> but i was like i was like this guy on the street is clearly racist yeah clearly he's like all i know is you guys are into banking yeah and that's all i know yep <laughs> and so uh but I, I read the, I, I ended up pulling up just YouTube videos on the Rothschilds, the Vanderbilts, 
the um uh the carnegies the uh like all the big titans of industry fucking insane i mean who's the one who um it wasn't vanderbilt it was pull up uh pull up some of those names one of them just gave all his money away just gave it all away mm. it was like that was his his whole thing gotta give hundreds of millions away he ended up losing his hair and moving up state uh he was the and he was and he was real handsy with girls that's like why he, was, he gave it all away that's, these are the things that i remember it wasn't the Rothschilds. No, it wasn't this. It was uh, <clears throat> Rothschilds were English, like banking family or some shit like that, right? So there's. I've seen a document. Who was, I, it was oil? Who was oil? The oil tycoon. Uh, I don't know to be honest. Type in oil tycoon. I guarantee you. No, not today. Wow. Do you have any interest in being a billionaire? Meaning, like in when you when you look at like I, I look at the way you guys run business over yeah. there in New York, and you yeah. guys are kind of the. You guys are kind of the prototype of how businesses run. Studio, content. Um, Andrew's definitely like Andrew's the guy. Yeah, I'm but like lucky to be in that camp, and then I learned from him. But do, but in being in that camp, do you have any interest in establishing a a cornerstone? Like like it looks like Andrew wants to take over the world, right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think he'd probably say I do. But and but all your everyone in your group, I wonder. When I look, do you each have that aspiration to become a entrepreneur? My asp- I was just talking to my good friend about this, who I know his wife I've known my entire life. She's like my sister. He married her. He and I got super close. And we were talking today, catching up. He is my smartest friend in the sense of like really smart, also good head on his shoulders. Rich made his, his quote, fuck you money is what we always talk about. And the thing about it is the fuck you number. And he's been good about this. He hit his number and he's good lives with you know he still works he still works hard but spends time with his family coaches the kids basketball team all that shit the fuck you number it just keeps getting higher there's a temptation where you set a bar and when i have that amount of money i'm gonna be good and i'm gonna relax and be on a beach with my wife and my kids and be a family man but the number just keeps growing and that i already can see my number i'm not at it at all i never hit even the first one but i can see how i'm moving the goalposts. it's like being at a craps table and having a hot hand. And you can tell yourself when you walk into the casino, if I double my money, I'm leaving. But once you double your money, I'm hot. Why don't I just keep rolling? Yeah. But I don't want to, as much as I want to, I want to be the greatest comedian of all time, but I, it is not worth it if it costs me my family, my kids, my happiness in that sense. Ooh. And I need to find a way to balance those two. <sighs> And that's the that tricky, that's the tough. tricky part. And Andrew is actually more like that, especially as he's gotten married. I think he's, I think his number probably is growing. I've seen his number. It was already high. And now he's like, eh, maybe a little higher. Yeah. But I also think both of us are hopefully going to keep each other accountable and like, yeah, man, but let's, it can't cost us the other half. And that's why we look at you and we're like, dude, that's great. We've been married. How long? 19 years? Yeah. 19 years. 17 kids. years together with 19. Okay. Yeah. 19 together. Like that's, that's the dream. It's not worth it if it costs you that yeah it's well it's interesting is that i have i've definitely leveraged at times family and happiness and and for work and i think yeah. probably more so than maybe it leads on i find <laughs> humility fascinating yeah um i find uh chris rock's new uh new new hour that he's touring with is called mm-hmm. uh kill the ego i think oh okay it's ego ego destroyer or something okay <clears throat> and it's it's fascinating because Someone like Chris Rock, I find I find him to be a guy. I find him to be very humble. Mm-hmm. Um, but I find him to be very honest too. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, a, I'm obviously I'm a huge Chris. I'm a ride or die for Chris Rock. Yeah, I mean he, he's a therapy guy. Yeah, it was what twice a day he was doing or some crazy shit like that. I think. Imagine being Chris Rock. Imagine yeah. so like. I'll use Andrew as an example because I've had this conversation with Andrew, and I think it's a safe place. But like Andrew, his goal was very clear. I want to be the goat. Yeah. It's what I want. Yeah. I don't think Chris Rock ever had that intention. Mm. I think Chris Rock was like, I want to I want to put in good work. I yeah. want my friends to respect me and I, I want to make a living. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he's the goat. Yeah. And life cha- and before bef- before we were establishing goats. Yeah. Like that we didn't have goats in 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 our business. Right. And then he's our Michael Jordan. And and I imagine that with and and you're married and you got kids and you've got one way of life and then all of a sudden, life pivots hard as fuck. Mm-hmm. 
and all of a sudden money's like <clears throat> insane right i can't imagine what that would feel like yeah you know yeah you know that made me think of though i've always envied that andrew could say that yeah oh I, I, a... he said it on my podcast he goes he, he I, I mean I'm, I'm i'm paraphrasing and you can hear it on my podcast but yeah. uh he's been in, if, since i've known him before 13 four, 15 years whatever i've known him I want to be the greatest to ever do it. And I was always like, oh, I want to be one of the greatest. And there was a self-worth thing in me that was like, I can't aspire to be the greatest. Yeah. And that's something I always envied about him. And I've, as I've worked on my self-worth and my confidence has grown and all that, now I'm like, oh, maybe that's a possibility in the world that I could be the greatest. So let's start saying that. Put it let's in the universe. That's, that. Rod Deerdock believes in that. Yeah. Manifestation. And dude, the, so many successful people I know believe in that, that it can't be bullshit. Yeah. And that part of you that thinks, oh, I can't aspire to that. You got to work on that thing. Because that's a self-worth thing that thinks I can't do anything I want. You can do anything you want. Do fucking anything you want to do. And now I'm looking and I'm like, hey, maybe that's a possibility. Dude, that's a possibility out there. I could be the greatest ever. Let me fucking say it. Let me go for it. Now, I, again, I don't want to cost me my family and my true happiness, but I want to go for it and leave a mark. However if, I do it, wherever you, I land. If you don't, the word, the word that uh, I learned a word when I was with my wife mm -hmm. and it was remiss. Okay. I thought it was sorry. Anyway, no, <laughs> that's a big one. I've learned uh, Ari, uh, uh, Ari Sandell. Yeah. Ari Sandell. Uh, Google him. Ari Sandell is a guy who won an Oscar uh, for a short film he directed. He was good friends with Steve Byrne and the whole comedy mm. store, store <clears throat> posse. And I had worked with him on my first TV show ever and everything he did was great. Yeah. And in his acceptance speech for the Oscar, I was watching because I knew him. I, and, and I, and he said, I would be remiss if I didn't thank my parents. And right. I said, what's remiss mean? Yeah. And, and Leanne goes, and by the way, that leans into the thing. I have no problem being the fool and not knowing right. what the thing is. Yeah. Uh, I'm very curious. And Leanne said, uh, it means you'd like really, really, really regret it. I went, right. ooh. Yeah. And, then she, and I said, <laughs> use it in a sentence. And she said, I would be remiss if we didn't have two children that's when he won the thing and i oh, said wow. really i said i would be remiss if i didn't make a movie and i came to hollywood and she mm -hmm. went really and i said that and i put it in the universe and i believed it and i said to myself my great white whale in this business was make a movie you can't come to hollywood hollywood yeah look you can go to new york and not make movies you can go to new york and do whatever the fuck you want right. you can do stand up the rest of your life in new york you can do sitcoms you can do everything you can also get on broadway there's a ton of shit but people move to hollywood to make movies yeah and I was like, I would be remiss if I didn't make a movie. And and I, I put that in the universe. I was like, I would like to make a movie. I would, and I was like, I'll never be a fucking actor. I'm never gonna be a movie star. But I want to make a movie. And I and I did. And it was, I'm so glad that you I put it in the universe yeah. to get it there. 100. percent What is what 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 else do you want to put in the universe? Because this is what I also believe in is that there are people listening to this that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Mark Wahlberg maybe at F45 or whatever his workout place is. Yeah. And he's like. He's like, oh, I'll put in a podcast. Oh, I fucking just saw this guy on Instagram, on uh, on YouTube. This guy's funny as shit. I fucking love this. And he puts it in, and he's listening right now. I would love to do a great TV show and movie. When you say TV show, you mean sitcom? Sitcom, sure. Like Atlanta or like? Either. I, I Like Rami? <clears throat> the, Ooh. I didn't get Louie, to be honest. I Like my white friends before everything loved Louie. I, I, I didn't get it always. I, yeah, I would always watch it, and I'd be like, what are you fucking talking about? But Rami hit me in that way where yeah. like even though he's Egyptian and I'm Indian, there is a he's Muslim. I'm Hindu, but there's a kind of like brown cultural similarity experience. And when I watch Rami, I'm like, man, that show fucking means something to me. There's an episode he writes about his mom and kind of like the solitude that his mom is feeling as her kids are growing up. And like she's alone in this country, kind of, even though she's got a family. And that almost made me cry. I thought about my mom. There's an episode about his dad it made me emotional. Like you, you see myself. I see my family in this show. I want to do a show like that. That means something. And again, I do not want it to take me from podcasting. I don't want to sit here and do the fucking, I'm apologizing and I'm pretending my politics are something different than they are. I don't want to have to change who I am fundamentally, but I want to make a movie and or TV show that matters. Yeah. My goal was like, when I entered stand-up, I was like, I want to be Chris Rock, but also a great actor. Chris Rock, stand-up, and this is not a takeaway from Eddie Murphy's stand-up, but like Chris Rock stand-up more resonated with me. Well, Chris Eddie Murphy stand -up, didn't do stand-up long enough. Eddie Murphy acting. Yeah, that's. And Eddie, Eddie, was, Eddie Murphy stand-up. I mean, not. Uh, no disrespect, but I think he did stand up for like five years. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it started when he was like 15 and he was retired when he was 21. Yes. I mean, yeah. And it, I, I could be wrong on those numbers. Yeah. But I mean, I like, think, yeah, I think Delirious, he was like 21, I think. And then so probably Raw, like 25. But that's it. That's all he did. And then he's done. Chris Rock, uh, by the way, I'd be cool being a Chris Rock actor too. <laughs> I would like, see. I want to be good at it. Now, that no, was no, also. No. I, I'm cool with just like Chris Rock, 
here's what I like about Chris Rock's acting. Yeah. Is is yeah, you, they plugged him into a, a few major motion pictures and and he he delivered he delivered enough. It it, it wasn't equivalent to a stand up in my per se. Yeah. But then when he did do like top five, top yeah. five was fucking great. I didn't like it as much as everybody else. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I, oh, I, people loved it. I didn't. I I also want to be me in these things. Like I don't want to have. I'm not trying to be a dramatic actor. Yeah. I want to be. Fi I'm fine. Kevin Hart as an actor, I love. He is Kevin Hart. I'm so cool being that. Okay, Eddie Murphy okay. as an actor, I'm so cool being that. Like you get to be you. That was also before podcasting. So the goals, like I was like, oh, this is a possibility. That's fucking cool. I would love this. But like, that's a thing that's like that would walk away me like that's cool. I made shit. I just want to make shit that matters. That's is there it. a quibble? My specials, my movies, whatever. Is I'm gonna. I'm, I just realized something. Yeah. There is no equivalent when you talk about the greatest comedians ever mm -hmm. that did it on all platforms. Meaning, yeah. meaning, fucking killer stand up and killer movie career. They're all black. Yeah. There's yeah. not one white dude. Yeah. You could be the guy. Uh, I don't know. You could be the white Chris Rock. <laughs> I got to work on this hour. <laughs> By the way, hold on. Well, this is over fair. I'm on my fifth fucking hour. Yeah. I think I might have, it would have happened already. <laughs> no, no, buddy. You got it in. You got it in. You this got next hour deep. is pretty fucking good. I'm really excited about this dig next deep, hour. buddy. You got it. But, but think about it. Chris yeah. Rock, Eddie Murphy. Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. Dave Chappelle. Chappelle. Dave Chappelle could be a movie star if he wanted. Yeah. Burr is kind of, he's dipping in acting in a, in a cool way. Never, start, never starred in a movie. Yeah, he like, should. He's been like, he's been like a, a, a supporting actor, yeah. but like never, and, 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 and no, no sight on Burr, but like the body of work we see isn't technically comedic. Yeah. Yeah. It, you I, know, like, I, I'm just, like the same, and, and, and no, look, I'm talking about friends right now. I'm yeah. talking about friends. And so I understand that, but like. Dane Dane had some great movies, but nothing like Jumanji. Nothing my like, read on Dane. Yeah, I don't know him. My read was he's, he's a, first. I'll start off just so we're clear. He's a great fucking guy. I believe that completely. Yeah. My read was he wasn't, and even, even weirdly, as I'm talking about all these goals, I'm listening to them. Like these are goals I had before I knew what flagrant two and podcasting all it could be so i would have to sit back and realign like what are my goals now that I know what this landscape has become. These are goals from 2006. Yeah, but uh day my read on him was i want to be a star i am a star i'm gonna be a star yeah he, me being a star is great but i'm a stand-up and that's where i want my everything to lead back to is this guy is the fucking stand-up here's you ready that was here, my read on dane here's my read now by the way don't put robin williams on there he did, never wrote any of his own material just being very clear robin williams stole a lot of material he was a fantastic performer he was an amazing actor. Yeah. I'm not sliding him. However, he, he was a pretty notorious thief. Right. I heard if you told him he, he he'd stole a pay. joke, he'd be like, yeah, probably. Yeah. What? How much you want? And and for as someone who creates his own material and performs his own material and doesn't have a writing team that tours with him and, and writes everything himself, I, I think Robin Williams is fucking amazing. Yeah. I, I see him more as an actor yeah. than I do comic. And I don't mean that as a slight, uh, I don't want to talk ill on, uh, about a dead man, mm -hmm. you know, but whatever. Here's the thing about Dane. You ready for this? Ready yeah. for my hot take? Dane has the same thing that, uh, that, uh, that I have, that Andrew has, that uh, Mark Norman has, that you have, that Tim Dillon has, that Joe Rogan has, all of that. He has all of that, except his launch his his drive was at a time in in during the trl days yeah when fame was the currency mm -hmm. we're talking pam and tommy sex tape we're talking uh we're talking fucking limp biscuit corn uh jessica and nick All, that's when Fa dane's launch was and it was the currency that sold tickets content wasn't selling tickets at the time mm -hmm. so in a weird way it almost put the cart in front of the horse dane got so famous Mm. And his stand up was fucking right on par. His stand up was his stand up was to this day some of the best stand up I've ever seen in my entire Again, life. Again, that was another guy I watched and I remember wanting to be ahead of the curve with comedy cuz like I kind of wanted to be a comedian. Yeah. And I watched his Comedy Central half hour and I was like I don't get it, but everybody seems to love it, so I'm oh, wrong. I got it. I got it totally. I remember fucking That might be a cultural thing. I'm not like might that might be, be cultural because I'm straight up yeah. white boy yeah like it's frat, frat if it's frat boy humor yeah it's it's in my and i wheelhouse. didn't drink and i didn't chase girls so i was probably looking at it like some dork like i just don't get it i don't relate to any of this so you know it's so funny is there's certain things that comedy that clicks with other people and back then it, it did seem like 
genre stamps. Like yeah. Mitch was the stoner comic. Yeah, yeah David yeah. Tell was the hard drinking comic. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that every black comic was the black comic. Every, <laughs> well, not Patrice. <laughs> yeah, was that's fucking true. Patrice was his own just, animal, just his own thing. Because you thought he'd be one thing when he went on stage, and he was not. Yeah. Um. But but it's what's interesting is like Dane and Tosh got this frat boy comic uh stamp mm -hmm. and neither of them were frat boys at all like dane yeah. never drank never did drugs i don't think even drank coffee same with daniel daniel meditates every day surfs stays by himself but in a weird way frat boys were drawn to them their sense of humor dialed into me mm -hmm. both of those guys Tasha's, yeah I made me love. laugh my yeah. fucking dick off i mean dane wrote jokes that i would go god damn it man like i, I mean i was and i was a younger in the business at the time uh we're the same age roughly but i'm younger than him yeah. doing stand-up same with tosh yeah both those guys wrote jokes that fucking blew me away yeah i remember especially when i first moved to la seeing tosh and going god damn what the fuck wait did you move to la first i moved to la for a year and a half can we pee and then i come yeah, back go piss, go piss. i don't want to break yeah. rhythm but... oh he brought up ronnie dangerfield oh ronnie dangerfield so yeah, Dangerfield did Dangerfield it. Dangerfield did it. Yeah, Dangerfield, Dangerfield did, it. did it. Great Dangerfield, comic. the fucking greatest. One of my favorite jokes. Seinfeld, Seinfeld, technically, I mean, he did the B movie, was a big movie, but he's more sitcom, if you ask oh, me. Dude, but if I did, if I had a Seinfeld career, I'd be thrilled. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Change oh, yeah, comedy, yeah, 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 yeah. the greatest no, but, sitcom of all time. But it's not, it's not Eddie Murphy. It's almost better, dude. What? Okay, you're going there now? Okay. All right. Um... It's almost better. He oh, he, executive producer of a sitcom that he did for 10 years or nine years, whatever it was, then walked away and he's still getting money from that every single day. Every single day. Yeah. He said that on the SNL 40th reunion or whatever. He was like, to him and Larry David, they're like, we got the last ticket to the amusement park. And then the ride just shut down. The ride shut down. It, they don't do that anymore. Yeah. They, uh, that's why, like, when you, what, what makes me giggle about Don Lemon's salary is I know what Kevin James is making on King of Queens. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. He was yeah. doing King of Queens. His fucking money was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's King of Queens. Mm -hmm. And and the amount of work for Kevin James was minimal. Yeah. Multicam it, sitcom, great life. Dude. But yeah, but that money doesn't exist anymore. I am so excited to be sponsored by Masterclass. I got the email. I got the link. And I checked it out. I got the app. And it is fucking awesome. Whatever you're into, Masterclass technically has a Masterclass on showing you an expert doing it at a higher level uh, I'm, I'm a big i like cooking i love cooking gordon ramsay's my guy i watched the master class on gordon ramsay and it was so fascinating because he didn't talk about cooking and i love gordon ramsay making eggs that's the way i make eggs gordon ramsay's way to make eggs he talked about preparing your kitchen which was so insightful you know it's like it's like as if you talk to a comic and they did a master class they talk about writing you, you'd think they talk about performing or getting on stage, all the things. It's the other thing. And it, that's what's so brilliant about Masterclass is it offers you an insight to the guys doing it at the highest level and women, men and women doing it at the highest level and how they're doing it, their insights. I absolutely love this app. You have to check it out. I'll do the rest of the read, but literally it's cool to see people killing it and how they kill it, no matter what it is, really, honestly, in my opinion. Because no matter where their take is, you can apply that to your life. Man, Gordon Ramsay is a, he's a king. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass as a Burt Cast listener and get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash Burt Cast right now. That's masterclass.com slash Burt Cast for 15% off masterclass. Remember the last time you were at the gas station and you saw those horrible branded erection pills? They're tempting, I know. But did you ever take a second to see what is actually in those products? It's terrible for you. The same goes for most of the products on the market that claim to help men in bed, but want that four-hour four hour erection. Nasty side effects, heart problems, a possible trip to the fucking hospital. I've, I've heard the horror stories. Joy Mode is here to save the day. Whether you're happy or unhappy with your performance in the bedroom, why not perform better? Joy Mode makes natural and science-backed sexual wellness products for men, their sexual performance booster is like a pre-workout for sex. They're going to give you a harder erection, a firmer erection, and they're going to increase your sex drive. I'm telling you right now, there's so many things in it that are that I can't pronounce that are fucking awesome for you, including vitamin C. <laughs> Joy Mode was created 
because products on the market were absolutely terrible. They really are. And I'm not even joking. They knew they could do better. Prescriptions come with all sorts of side effects. I have friends that have had those side effects. And the over the gas counter stuff is sketchy as fuck. A lot of guys take both because they don't have a better option. Here's what you do with Joy Mode. Simply tear open the sachet, mix with six to eight ounces of water, and just like your favorite electrolyte packet, for better use, consume anywhere 45 minutes to four hours prior to sexual activity. You will notice better blood flow, a better erection, quality, the firmness, and an increased sexual drive. Want to spice things up in the bedroom and boost your sexual performance and do it naturally without nasty prescription drugs? Well, we have a special offer for the BurtCast audience. You go to usejoymode.com slash Burt or enter Burt at checkout for 20% off your first order. That's usejoymode.com slash Burt for 20% off your first order. Thank you, Joy Mode. You know what Cosby was making? He was making like 50 million a year wow. on Cosby Show. Wow. I mean, fucking, it's funny. It's funny. I never saw Bill Cosby himself. Did you ever see that? I've seen parts of it. I never I saw it. And I realized I should have watched it before I watched the documentary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. now I really can't watch it. Yeah. I mean, I, he's a fucking monster. Yeah, it's tough for me because that show, growing up with immigrant parents, was the one show we could all watch and laugh at and understand everything. And it was, like, not weird or inappropriate because Indians don't talk about sex ever. So, like, you, there was none of that. It was, like, all a family show, and that was a, a thing that I share with my family. There was no other show we could Cosby all watch show. and laugh at. Cosby show. So, like... I'm not phase on love. I'm not going to st- openly be like free Bill Cosby. Yeah. But I also have a complicated relationship with like that show meant something to me, man. I don't want you to take that from me. It's it's funny. I didn't realize how much that show meant to me until watching this doc. And they do a, a little they do a, a chunk talking about just how that imprinted on us that that he was America's dad. Yeah. And I hadn't thought this thought in a million years, at least fucking at least maybe 35 i wanted bill cosby to be my dad he was cool yeah i wanted my dad to be cooler yeah like my dad was just a dad like he he didn't rape anybody (laughs) (laughs) but he wasn't that funny (laughs) (laughs) he wasn't charming he wasn't charming he didn't didn't give great gifts yeah the whole funny story we never lined us up to dance on the stairs and and like dude my proposal is the way I proposed to my wife is rooted in the Cosby show. Really? And it was my friend's idea. Shouts to Luther Jackson, my roommate from college. He, big romantic, like kind of like me. But like I was like, I want to propose to my wife. Empire State Building is where we first became a couple. It'll be right before her birthday. We can do that. And he was like, yo, you got it. He was like, this is weird, but you got to do it like the Cosby show. And there was an episode where all the men are seeing who can get their wife the best gift. Yeah. And they all tell these stories. And like the wife is so impressed. They remembered. Bill does one where he tells a story, but gets every detail wrong. And he's like, there was this wooden uh, bangle that you saw at this store. And she was like, that's not the store. That wasn't the gift. And there, that wasn't the play. And it wasn't even the gift. It wasn't a wooden bangle. It was a green emerald something. And she pulls it out. And that's the thing. So like, he was like, do not propose to her at the Empire State Building. Just lead her on the entire time you're there. And then after you leave, when you get to the bottom, propose to her. So I pump faked my, I went, took her to the Empire State oh, Building. She's wow. positive. She's, she's texting her friend. She's getting engaged. <sighs> that's pretty powerful. And I... I would like, I reached into my pocket and pulled out gum. I would have long speeches that led to nothing. She's fucking livid as we're leaving. She's legit like her. She's thinking like, uh, what am I going to, how am I going to explain this to my friends? She's heartbroken. She's mad. And then when we get to the bottom, all of her friends and family are sitting there. And then I proposed to her. And it was like, dude, that's, f- I would not have had this p- proposal if it's not for the Cosby show. Yeah. I would never thought of it. Yeah. So you're asking me to set the bad mouth this dude. And it's like, fuck, dude, that's tough for me. It's it's well if you watch the documentary it'll be a lot easier because there's <laughs> there, there's a lot of aggressive as, rapes. As, a big, as, as if I watched the documentary, you know what I mean? It's sixty fucking women. I mean, it's like it's at a, at a certain point you're like, like the very first one, Kamal did a great job showing it because the very first one you're like, you you're like without a doubt you believe her a hundred percent, like without a oh, doubt. Goodness, and then as they go, you're like, but but I wanted my dad. I definitely wanted my dad. To be like Bill Cosby. And and I had a buddy whose dad was like Bill Cosby. And I remember going like, oh, like. Yeah. Like Bill Cosby just seemed cool as fuck. Yeah. I, I don't, I never, I missed the out of touch. I started having kids and getting out of media a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right when he started doing the pull your pants up shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
do you think that do you do you, do you think that had an effect on Hannibal that whole thing? Do you think that fucked with his head? Yeah, I think that was like part of the reason he said like that was part of his beginning rant. He was like, "This guy will tell people to pull their pants up," and it's like, "Bro, no, no, no." I meant I meant the being the, oh. the cornerstone of that. Oh yeah, I think it did. I don't think he wanted it to be that. I don't think he no, intended for any of this to happen because those cases have been out there. I had heard it and I forgot about it. I had heard about it once or twice before that. And I think the first time I for sure forgot about it. I'm thinking back the second time I might have pushed it out of my memory, too. But like then when Hannibal brought it up and there's a video and you're watching it and everybody's talking about it, you can't forget about it. But I don't think he wanted it to be that. I think he just said it at a show in Philly and somebody taped him without him knowing and put it up there. And he's like, bro, I don't want to be this fucking guy. I don't know if it's pure coincidence that he moved to Chicago a couple years after and now he just kind of tours and does his own thing. I don't know. He was a guy, dude. And he's still so funny. But he was a guy. He was coming. Hannibal was fucking coming. He was in every movie. I wonder. I've wondered a lot about that. I'm friends with Hannibal enough to call him and ask him. But I I, I have always, I just, I, I, part of me was like, I don't, I don't, like, I want to, I don't want to know, A, that the industry is that disgusting that, Bill Cosby might have made a few phone calls and been oh, like, hey, man, I know this guy's got a fucking movie career launching. Yeah, I need a favor. I don't know if it was that. I, I don't. I Part of me is like, dude, he didn't want to be cause black people look at this guy like, how fucking dare you, dude? Why would you take down? We got enough people. I think I hear that a lot. If we you got, got enough face people on love tweeting down. free Bill Cosby. Bruh. That's what I'm saying. So I, I think he was like, dude, I don't want to. I, and he just, he might just move to Chicago because he's like, I don't care about it. Well, I think he shit. started buying properties in Chicago. Uh, Hannibal's also a businessman. Like, love that. I, wish, I love that. I shit. wish I had an ounce of that. Awesome. Hannibal's first person to talk to me about tour buses. Yeah. Like we were in Madison and uh, I was doing the club. He was doing the theater. Yeah. And he's like, come, hey, come by after we'll have a drink. And I was like, okay. And I went back. He is done drinking. He doesn't drink anymore. Yeah. But he ate an edible and, and, uh, we just sat there and talked, and he broke down the financials of a fucking tour bus, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa I want to hear that. I want a tour. I hate flying. I hate flying the most. It is the greatest thing I've ever done in my entire yeah, life. Yeah, I want that. It is the greatest. It is. When I see Schultz on a fucking private jet, I go, I don't I want go, that at you're all. You're misspending your money. I don't want that at all. It is so much better to be in a tour bus, and you get done your show. I mean, I could pitch. I could pitch. This is how a tour bus works. This is the beauty of it. Tonight, I'll get on a flight into dc my bus will be at the airport no one no one packs any bags you you have a backpack everyone so we'll roll six deep tonight everyone will have a backpack and that is it we will then deplane and go straight to the bus get on the bus it'll be a red eye we'll all have a cocktail we'll then go find a place to get breakfast we'll all have breakfast we'll go to sleep we'll sleep half of the day we'll wake up towards the end we'll all do a workout We'll go do the. Sh- we'll go to the venue. We'll be at the venue. We'll shower. They'll shower in the venue. I shower in the bus. We go in, do two shows, come back. Everyone into the bus. Fucking light a joint. Have a cocktail. Throw on a documentary. Pull up fucking flagrant. Pull up something. Pull yeah. up your special. Yeah. Like that's the best when you're with all comics and you're just gossiping. Yo, did you see uh, Akash's take on Kanye? Oh, pull it up. Let's see it. And yeah. then we're all sitting there. It's the fucking greatest. And then Ron shows up around two in the morning. He's like, you guys still drinking? We're like, yeah. We start driving. Everyone starts falling off one by one. We go to our bunks, wake up in the next city, wake up. Everyone wakes up same time, go get breakfast, go play disc golf. I mean, it is the, it is every night it is. Do the show. All your shit's there. During so football, you don't tr- drive to every venue. You'll fly to D.C. and then take the tour bus from D.C.? I'll fly to D.C. and then I'll, and then. I will be on the tour bus for two weeks, three weeks now. Uh, and so, and then, and then, so like if I have a time off, I try to come home and that's that part yeah. when you talk about, I don't want to compromise the family. Yeah. And there's times, there's times you gotta, yeah, you're gonna yeah. have to be I like, mean, look, look, my, and my wife is down for that. She's like, look, I want you to make money and I want yeah. you to do comedy if that's what you love. So do that. Just, you know, we got to connect too. And that's something I'd like, she said something like, even when you're here, you're not here. And I'd be on my phone. And so now, even if we're just like watching TV or whatever, I just, I have, I'm trying to make it a point. This is new, but it's worked a, a well is throw the phone. Like just, I can't reach it here. It's gone. Now it's just us. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Even when you're here, you're not here. I've heard that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got rid of the PS2. Was it the PS2 or the Xbox? Yeah. Cause, uh, I would, I'd be supposed to be hanging out with my kids and I'd just be playing Tiger Woods golf and yeah. my wife's like done. And she got rid of it. She got rid of it. Yeah. She got, my wife's thrown away, uh, <laughs> three things in my life 
four technically. Uh, a thing of oxy, a thing of volume, my Xbox, and my PSP. <laughs> Those are the three things she's actually thrown out and said, you don't get this anymore. If she puts PlayStation on the same level as Oxy, you were a fucking addict, bro. You were a PlayStation addict. I, what, the thing was, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I That's couldn't. so funny. I loved video games. Video game. You ever, were you a big video game guy? I was until like college, and then I just stopped, and I don't know why. To disappear into a video game. To disappear. Yeah. And to... Have that. It's, I must be what like people that like reading what they feel like. Yeah. Or or um. I know. I know it does feel like a Xanax. Yeah. I, I know that Xanax is the only thing I'll ever take anymore, and I'll take like 0.25 milligrams every blue moon. Right. But uh, I remember being very obsessed with Tony Hawk's uh Tony Hawk skate skater game whatever, mm -hmm. and we went to the aquarium, and I didn't realize that I had been playing uh, Tony Hawk's skater. And, it, and that part of the thing was the Long Beach Aquarium. I didn't realize that uh, on this game was the Long Beach Aquarium. Yeah. And I took my kids to the Long Beach Aquarium. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? And I was like, oh, my God. I've skated this rail. And my wife's like, what? And I go, I, I skated a rail from here all the way over the water. <laughs> and she was like, you did what? And I was like, and I started confusing real life into, like, it was, like, crazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, um uh what i'm forgetting i'm blanking on his name uh right now one of my not dustin it's not, uh one of my good friends motherfucker duncan trussell okay he uh i heard the name on he's, he's one of joe's best friends okay he was explaining the addiction of video games and he was like saying one time he was driving down the street and he was like oh those look like the mountains of you yidor yeah it was like some magic the quickening yeah. and 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 he had he was living he was living his current life in the video game yeah i just got an oculus and i am fucking terrified to try oculus yeah porn. Dude, i'm not I'm because if i shit. do oculus porn that might i might be done we're all gonna be in that metaverse shit and it terrifies me it terrifies me to no end i like this i don't know that and i'm okay. sure it's gonna be fucking amazing okay though how about how cool would it be this is what the metaverse i like I would love cheat on to, your wife in the metaverse. I got it. I'm right there with you. By the way, <laughs> cheat on my wife. I'm gonna be killing prostitutes in the metaverse. <laughs> <laughs> fucking cheat on my wife. I'm fucking. I'm having sex with a dude first. I'm doing everything I wouldn't do in real life. I'm gonna see if I like it. <laughs> Test it out the fucking waters. Don Lemon, I'm coming for you. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, he could use the money. <laughs> the Oh, oh God, man! Say. How hey. cool would this be, though? Right? You put on your Oculus and you are transformed into the third chair in Rogan's podcast. Fire! And then, and then you're, and then you're sitting in the room like this. Yeah. And you're in charge of the camera. Yeah. And you're watching the podcast. That's what's scary about it. It's going to be better than reality. Why are we going to be here? If you're telling me I could be like when you guys had Alex Jones on or whatever, yeah, when you guys yeah, moved yeah. to Miami, you should have fucking stayed in Miami. I don't know what the fuck you guys I doing. didn't want to leave, dude. Schultz, no, was the, it was life is a, leverage and he has the leverage right now. So what am I going to tell him? Hey, I'm telling you, man, that was one of the best little. Uh, there's certain things that like that I that I just go. I don't I don't even know if it was an accident on purpose. But it was fucking brilliant. It was, it was a, completely brilliant. impromptu. He texted us. Yeah like a week before and he was like yo we're going to miami yeah. let's do it miami or texas and then we all decided i wanted texas because my family was there but like everybody else said miami so i was like fuck it that does not sound bad i asked my wife and she was like if y'all go to miami i'm coming so then i was like all right let's push for miami we're all on board and then it was the greatest i didn't want to leave dude i was so happy out there so happy but if you could what was the what were we just about the metaverse, metaverse. Alex if, Jones. When you guys had Alex Jones on, if I could have put on fucking Oculus and just been in the room, yeah, that's what I mean. That's what, yeah, what, that's what you know. When when people when people watch this, they would. I I, I would. I I'm a bigger podcast fan than I am podcaster at times. Mm -hmm. Like I'm really into podcasts. Mm -hmm. I love podcasts. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that I have somewhat of a and I say disposable income when it comes for podcasts, but like that because it's a business write-off, I can go on a Patreon and subscribe to everyone's Patreon. Right. I can subscribe to everyone's fucking uh, uh, 
cameos or, or not cameos, but like only fans or like right. whatever the fuck. Because for me, it's research, but I'm also fascinated by it. Yeah. I love to see what people are doing. I love like, and so when you tell me I could put on an Oculus and be in the room, yeah, I mean that's like a no brainer. Yeah, Beca and like they we they Brian Simpson came over. We did my Oculus. He did his Oculus in there, mm -hmm. and I was fucking floored. We did it. Peter, my assistant, did it for my daughter Georgia, and I I watched a child who is, you know, too cool for everything because she's a teenager and whatever. I already got my hot take, and she went, "What the f like?" It. I'm telling you, man. If that if that's what the metaverse is, I'm into it. It is going to be better. It's only going to get better. It's not going to get less reality or less less realistic. It's going to get so. The Matrix is so far ahead of its time. It blows my mind. I think about that movie and how we're headed there all the time. I do believe robots are going to kill us. I believe this in my heart of hearts. But why would they even need to if we're just so plugged in? We're not even, we're just fucking, just find a way to keep us sustained and we're out of here. What, um, I have nine minutes before I have to leave. What, uh, I'm just saying that so that we can. 100%. Appreciate um, you. what, um, the, you're, you're in uh, Southern California this week, and I know this will be aired after that. What's, why are you, what, what are you working on right now? Like, are I, you doing some of the old stuff a little bit? I'm not. I don't. All new? I, people seem to want it, which is interesting. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to soft pitch it to you. Is The machine. When, when that's a different, that's a little bit of a that's different what I was gonna beast. Say. But, yeah. but I always would, I would always put a little bit of English on, on a show mm. where you bring, sprinkle a couple of murderers in there mm -hmm. because not ev not everyone that comes to your shows saw the special that you have to be like i'm aware of that like mm -hmm. even when i go to my shows you're doing bigger and bigger venues every time there are people that have brought people that are like you got to see this guy you're gonna fucking love him mm -hmm. i'd say the, and so i'd always say i'd always say sprinkle a little bit of english but not enough that it bores you. Right. Like, it's got to be something you want to do. So that's what's interesting for me is it was, I only put out 20 minutes. It's like 25, 30 in the room. Oh, so I you have, it out. Yeah, so, yeah. But I would always sprinkle one or two of those jokes in there to prop up the whole hour. And now that I don't have those, I'm like, well, fuck, dude. There's always these one or two jokes I could go to to elevate the hour that now I'm like, whoa, that's all gone. So yeah. what do I do? So they, I'm, I'm struggling a bit in my first few shows out. Like, I'm, we're having fun, but it's not, for me, it's not like cooking, cooking. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, they, I, yeah, maybe I'll do one or two. I, always, I, I mean, I was, Daniel Tosh, so I just told this to someone the other day, but Daniel Tosh told me one time, I was like, I'm so impressed how fucking strong your writing is and how you always have new material. Like him and him and Dane were the two guys that were always had new shit going. And yeah. they were always, and I, and I remember Tosh told me one time, hey man, uh, get famous first. Like make sure people are buying tickets to your show hmm. first and then, He's like, and I remember Attell said to me, if you, well, Attell said the exact opposite now that I think about it. He was like, if you're not writing now new stuff all the time when no one gives a fuck about you, yeah. you'll never learn to write when you're right. famous. I just, I mean, I get bored with material. I get bored so, as fuck. So new writing is great. Like writing, writing, writing. Cool. I had an hour that I had an hour that I was touring that was fine. that was killing. And I just got bored with it. Yeah. And then, and I'm getting ready for a special and I scrapped it. And I started a new hour. It was just wow. like you got to put that hour out somewhere, though. Uh, no. So you want to know my hmm. my process uh. is uh, write the first hour, kind of scrap it, have your little keyhole p place markers that you like. You know, those are the things that keep you up. Write the new hour, and then take everything uh. and sizzle it down so it's one hour because you're always talking too much. Whenever you do stand up, people always think they're. None of us have the, uh, what is it, the, uh, what, what was the word, economy of words. Yeah. Like, you skinny up shit. Like, I had this one great bit that was like a fucking seven-minute chunk, and Leanne watched it the other day, and she's like, that should be two minutes. She's yeah. like, she kept going, enough, I get it, I get it. That's and you're hilarious, like, yeah. she's like, Jesus, do you, does your wife watch your stand-up? She watches, she loves it. She's, uh, she's very impressed with the crowd work still, but like the bits, she's like, uh, she's legit said to me like, you're gonna do all new jokes on the road now, right? You can't do those anymore. <laughs> it's like you've seen this shit enough, huh? Uh. <laughs> yeah, you've seen this enough. <laughs> and you guys both live in New York? Yeah, yeah, we're in New York. Um, I she didn't want to be in the city. She hates the city. Yeah, she has her nieces are in Jersey and Long Island. She lives in Philly, growing up, so she goes back to Philly all the time. So I was like, look, I'll, I want to be in New York. I'll take you to New York, but I'll make it as much like Philly as we can in the sense of like 
I'll, we took my parents' Honda Accord. We got a parking spot there. We're near the highway that that can get her to Jersey quickly. Like, let's make it, and we'll be in a nice place. So, like, I'll make it something that's as livable for you as possible. But I think I need to be here right now to just really lean into career stuff. Yeah. So she's on board now, but she's still. We're both looking for an exit strategy of New York. I want. I'm trying to get Schultz out of New York so quickly. It's the a, second I see an opening next winter, I'm going to say this is the last winter we're here. It's, that's tough. He's so New York. He's so New York, but he's also getting older and the cold is getting worse and worse. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's not getting that old though. It's, he's going to, I'm telling I'm going to start in, inceptioning the idea. Like, don't you feel it in your bones? What you yet? guys got to do is you guys got to get your chicks pregnant and then trust me, New York becomes unmanageable. <laughs> Fucking, I, I am praying he gets his wife pregnant so we can just be the fuck out. Oh, God, that is, uh, I'm telling you, man, it was, it was very nice to live in L.A. when you had kids, so user-friendly. Yeah. And then you take your kids to New York, and you'd be like, I'm sorry, I got to bring a car seat into this taxi? Yes. The fuck are you talking about? Yes. Like, I got to, but like, oh. I'm and, excited for dad life. My richest friend that I brought up earlier, he has a minivan, and he calls it the Dadzerati, and I want that exact thing. Let me tell you something, man. People sleep on how great minivans are. Yeah. They are fucking solid. Now, I've always been an SUV guy, but that's because I have a small dick. Yeah, so like yeah me too but yeah, i don't care yeah minivan. So i've always gotten many i've always gotten big suvs the biggest suv they sell i've always gotten that yeah um but man my daughter Ida wants a minivan <laughs> like it's, what 16 year old wants a minivan kid, kids today are i think they're into all that shit uh, yeah they're fucking what's cool is the uncool thing yes like i look at like what people wear these days and i go I thought that was nerdy. Yeah. And they're like, no, that's what's in. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like thrift. Uh, thrift shopping. Yeah. yeah. Thrift store. My daughters wear thrift store clothes. And I'm just like, we have a fashion show. My daughter's, uh, we got a dress in whatever college she wants to go to. Mm. So I go to the fucking team store and I buy all the fucking yeah. nice shit that looks cool and fucking hoodies and tie dye this. Yeah. And then my wife goes to this thrift store and finds some bullshit fucking jacket yeah. that's reversible. Yeah. smells like crap my daughter loses her shit for it yeah she's yeah. like that's what's cool mom thanks and i'm like i spent 500 bucks on fucking nothing on nothing i got yeah. his fucking nike sbs but they in a certain way they got it figured out like if you if you get the minivan i'm okay with you my wife don't want to get one and she don't know what's happening i'm getting a fucking minivan whether she wants it or not but you get drive whatever you want to i'll trade in my porsche for this i don't care one million views in one week in one week it was amazing Thank What's you that for feel retweeting like? it. it was, What's that feel like? It was really cool, but then it's also just like, well, I foot on the gas. I now that again my self worth and self confidence in this place where I'm like, oh, I, I feel like I can hang with pretty much anybody. Now I want to make everybody know. So I want to, and Andrew's telling me this is just he's like, just enjoy this. I want to put out one of the shows. I ended up having this crowd work set that was like amazing. I want to yeah. put out a crowd work special yeah. in the next few weeks. Yeah, like that fast. And we're working on it. We're cutting it up just in case I decide to go. Andrew again is like, dude, you need to let this sit and build and build. Well, there is a there right. is a let's well, let's see where you at where you at right now. Type it in. Bring back a poo. I think it's we're touching one point four. I think that's great. That's great. Yeah, I'm you I'm, guys. It's you, Sam Morel, Mark Norman, Mark Norman, Andrew, Andrew. Yeah, Giannis did a YouTube special, yeah, right? He did a YouTube special. Yeah, one point three seven basically. That's fucking awesome yeah so it was a fantastic special thank you so much it you really was. it was so cool no of course man of course well you know i've been a fan of yours for a while and Likewise, it's funny man it's funny because i i i made a joke about you on a podcast yeah yeah yeah, and, yeah. And i don't know if you heard yeah, it yeah it was so cool well i was like uh was it about you spreading covid spreading covid yeah <laughs> I mean, terracell or whatever yeah. i was like it's so yeah. cool but and then i was like fuck I, I don't know him like that but i was like He's he's a podcaster. He's a comic. Yeah, he gets it. I He'll get, get it. it. And so I was like, oh, thank God. Yeah. I think I might have even texted Andrew. It was like, because I was shitting on Andrew at the time. Yeah. Because you guys all moved to Miami and Andrew kept renting boats. And yeah. I go, motherfucker. <laughs> You, you have no idea what an affront that is to a Florida kid. I go, you buy a boat. You get a friend with a boat. You never fucking rent a boat. You never rent a boat. The fucking you don't most... buy a boat, though. I heard the happiest days in the boat owner's life, the two happiest days are the days he buys the boat and the day he sells the boat. Yep. Uh, buying a boat's a lot like dating a stripper. Seems like a great idea at the time. Then two years later, you spent way too much money on it. It spent way too much time in the sun, and you got to choke it just to get it to turn over. <laughs> Boom, son. It's an uh, old good. fucking Florida joke. That's, I got tons of Florida jokes. Great. Um, dude, I appreciate you doing this. Thank you for having me, man. No, thank you. Anytime. Anytime you're in LA. Done. Poor fucking Don Lemon. <laughs>